living longer and staying healthier. It's Healthy Talk with Dr. Michael Smith, MD. Here's your host, Dr. Mike. Recently, the son of a well-known public figure died of brain cancer. He was really young. And when this man was only a toddler, he experienced great emotional trauma. He survived a car crash that uh, I think killed his his mom and his sister. And so it, it has led to more and more people to start wondering, is there is there a connection between this type of physiological, psychological, physical stress, just stress in general, right, and the physical diseases uh, that we suffer as we get older as an adult? I mean, is there a connection between the stress and a cancer, for instance? My guest to discuss this issue is Donna Jackson Nakazawa. I'm going to call her Donna moving forward. She's an award-winning science journalist, public speaker, an author of The Last Best Cure, in which she chronicled uh, her year-long journey to health. Her latest book, Childhood Disrupted, was born through the author's own search to better understand the role of her own childhood, uh, childhood adversity played in the chronic health issues she faced as an adult. Donna, welcome to Healthy Talk. Thank you so much for having me. So what do you think? Let's just, um, what do you think about this idea of a some sort of stressor as a child uh, or even just even as an adult leading to chronic disease later in life. What's your thoughts on that? Well, really my thoughts are based on over 1,500 different studies which show us that the relationship between stress and how it affects our body physiologically um, leads to long-term changes which increase inflammation in both the body and brain. And of course, as we've come to understand, disease is really based on inflammation in the body. So we, when we say it, stress causes disease, it sort of raises red flags. People think, well, what, is that, what does that mean? My, my disease is physical, therefore how could it just be stress? However, when we break it down through the new science of psychoneuroimmunology, we can see that stress is really stressful thoughts, stress states, which are fight or flight or freeze. And these brain states cause this chemical cocktail to course through our bodies and up our levels of inflammatory chemicals like norepinephrine and cortisol and also stress-related hormones. Together, these go out into the body, flood the body and brain, and raise our armies of white blood cells. And that and other factors cause our inflammation levels over time when we are chronically stressed to rise. And those higher inflammation levels lead to disease. When this happens in children, the long-term effects on the developing body are quite striking. It's interesting, Donna, that you mention, you know, the, the immune response that happens uh, from stress. And, and we, you know, I think some of you, know, you mentioned the 1500 uh, publications, you know, linking stress to disease. I know a lot of that initial research in the 70s, the 80s was really focused on cardiovascular uh, disease linked to stress. Yeah. And, and, we, and we've, we've kind of teased that out pretty well now. We know that the immune response kind of infiltrates the plaque that's already there. It causes the plaque to become unstable. It becomes inflamed. You're stressed out. You're just feeding that and the plaque ruptures and you get a heart attack. I mean, I think that's well worked out. Those other studies you mentioned, though, those other, you know, those 1,500 studies, is, have we, are, when we talk about stress-causing disease, is it really just cardiovascular? Um, and what about this, uh, the brain cancer incident here? I mean, are, has the research teased out which diseases stress is most linked with? Well, in the research that's going on right now, looking at how long these relationships grew in the body between stress, inflammation, and the later appearance of disease. It's very difficult to tease out cause and effect 
very specifically. However, some researchers are doing it. They have found, um, for instance, that you know when couples argue five days later, they're more likely to have a cold. They've found that when they stress individuals in the lab, wounds and blisters heal more slowly. So we have this cause and effect relationship in many direct lab studies. But we also have another way of looking at this, and this is through longitudinal epidemiological research. So one of the most startling of these is the research that's looked at how when developing, when children are are growing and they have chronic stressors, they are exponentially more likely as adults to develop every disease that you just mentioned, from heart disease, migraines, autoimmune disease, cancer. So longitudinal studies tell us something a little bit different than lab studies where we can look exactly at a cause and effect. When we take these two different areas of research together, there's literally not a single really prevalent chronic disease where we haven't shown a relationship between stress yeah. and the onset of disease. There was w- one study, and Donna, forgive me, I don't remember if I w- read this on maybe a review on, on, on your book, uh, Childhood Disrupted, or if maybe it was maybe it was in a blog. I don't, I don't remember exactly where I saw this, but I know it was by you, and you, you quoted a study that said 80% of adults who suffered some sort of adverse childhood experience and were later admitted to the hospital for an autoimmune um, condition, were were women. So it, it, do, when it comes to stress and autoimmunity, is that really more connected to women's issues, not so much for the man? Well, um, it turns out that stress affects the developing body and brain a little bit differently for women than men. And one of the things that happens with women who has girls-based, chronic, unpredictable stressors in the home, and we should just say that researchers have looked at many different categories of early childhood stress, and they include living with a parent who suffers from depression or another mental illness, living with a parent who suffers from an addiction, such as being an alcoholic, um, having parents divorced, become separated, or lose losing a parent, (coughs) excuse me, in some way, and a number of other things we might assume to be traumatic, like sexual or physical abuse, um, being chronically humiliated or put down by parents. And so when these happen, when a girl is faced with chronic, unpredictable, toxic stress like this as a child, things happen a little bit differently in her body because of the female immune system. And I can tell you more about that if you want. And that leads to the the fact that women are more likely, if they have suffered early childhood stress, to develop autoimmune disease in adulthood. In fact, for every category of adverse childhood experiences that a woman faced as a girl, she's 20% more likely to be hospitalized with an autoimmune disease as an adult. Yeah. Real quick, so you mentioned the female or the, the girl immune system. What, just real quickly, we only have about 40 seconds left. What do you, what's the difference between a boy immune system and a girl immune system? Estrogen and the way in which estrogen interacts with our stress hormones because of the way that women's bodies are made to carry babies. We carry okay. more estrogen. This protects us when we're carrying a, a baby. Right. But it actually let's, I'll tell you what, Donna, let's leave that there. When we come back, we'll wrap that up and we'll get into your next book, Childhood Disrupted. This is Healthy Talk on Radio MD. I'm Dr. Mike. Stay well. <laughs> 